Since his appearance, Al Haytham has been a highly anticipated character within the Genshin community. The Academia Scribe's cool and mysterious nature left players curious not only about his background, but also about his potential as a playable character. With his release, Al Haytham proves to be a strong on-field Dendro character. He deals significant personal damage and maintains high Dendro application, allowing him to fill many niches in Dendro teams. This video will inform you of Al Haytham's build and playstyle, as well as his value to your account, before you wish. As always, if you enjoy Al Haytham for reasons like his voice actor, aesthetic, personality, or broad shoulders and chest, these videos are by no means meant to stop you from spending your Primo Gems on him. Instead, they should prepare you for the type of problems that you'll need to solve or work around to meet your gameplay expectations. Before we dive into what our Feeble Scholar actually does, let's have a quick lesson on the spread reaction which makes up much of Al Haytham's personal damage. When Al Haytham triggers Quicken, his Dendro attacks receive bonus damage based on his elemental mastery and level. This is also multiplied by his crit and bonus Dendro damage stats. This is an important factor to consider when gearing him. We will cover his gear later on in this video. Let's talk about the most important part of Al Haytham's kit, his mirrors. In addition to letting him stare at his beautiful face, Al Haytham's chisel light mirrors convert his attacks to Dendro and allow him to inflict projection attacks. These periodically deal additional Dendro damage on his normal, charged, and plunging attacks based on the number of mirrors he possesses. Al Haytham's Chisel Light mirrors can be gained through each of his abilities, stacking up to three times. These mirrors expire one at a time, once every four seconds. This duration is refreshed if more mirrors are generated while Al Haytham has three mirrors, but not if a new mirror is generated. His team rotations are built around keeping a maximum amount of mirrors up for his full on-field duration. With flashy and quick animations, Al Haytham's normal and charge attacks can rapidly dish out dendro damage and trigger projection attacks as long as he has mirrors. One effect to note is that his first ascension passive provides one mirror when Al Haytham uses his charge attack or plunging attack once every 12 seconds. His elemental skill has a tap and hold. On tap, he dashes forward, deals dendro damage, and gains one mirror or two if he didn't possess any mirrors at first. On hold, you can aim his skill and choose where he'll dash before dealing damage. Mechanically, it functions exactly like Ka-Ching's elemental skill, but green. Unfortunately, it does have a long 18 second cooldown, preventing Al Haytham from using his skill more than once per rotation. The projections triggered by Al Haytham's attacks when he has mirrors are considered elemental skill damage. There are two things to note about them. One, they have both attack and elemental mastery scaling, and two, every other projection attack applies Dendro, allowing Al Haytham to trigger multiple spreads in a single wave of projection attacks when he possesses three mirrors. Al Haytham's burst consumes any mirrors he possesses and deals AoE Dendro damage within a field. For each mirror it consumes, his burst will have more damage instances. Its secondary effect grants mirrors based on how many were consumed after a two second delay. When cast with no mirrors, he will generate three. For each mirror it consumes, the burst will generate one fewer mirrors. This proves to be a big drawback as casting his burst with three mirrors for more damage will leave him with no mirrors and less follow-up damage. So it's usually better to open your rotation with Al Haytham's burst to begin with three mirrors. Finally, his second passive provides his projection attacks and burst a damage buff based on his elemental mastery. Overall, it's a juicy boost to his damage and elemental mastery scaling. Al Haytham has a wide variety of gear options he can use for weapons and artifacts. For artifacts, if no one else on Al Haytham's team can wear the set, the four-piece Deepwood Memory set is his best artifact. However, it is best to have a support wield the set in most of his teams. His other options are the four-piece Gilded Dream set, as well as combinations of the two-piece Deepwood Memories, two-piece Elemental Mastery, two-piece Attack, and two-piece Emblem sets. Deepwood and Elemental Mastery set bonuses are preferred over the other two, but choose based on which artifacts have the best substats for you. Having Al Haytham's Burst available is critical for certain teams to maintain three mirror projections. Here is a list of energy recharge requirements. After reaching this threshold, 
aim for around 200 to 300 elemental mastery, and then focus on crit substats. For weapons, many of the 5 star weapon options are viable on him with his signature weapon, Light of Foliar Incision, ranking the highest. For 4 star weapon options, Al Haytham can make use of the Black Sword along with Iron Sting and Tokabo Shigure, which are great free to play options for him. He can also utilize energy recharge weapons due to many of his teams and rotations requiring full 3 mirror uptime for Dendro application. Pavonius Sword is particularly helpful if he is run as the only Dendro unit in his teams with energy hungry teammates. Harbinger of Dawn also becomes a powerful option at refinement rank 5, although it requires a shield in order to keep the passive at full uptime. As for his talents, it is most important to level him to 90 first, as most of his damage comes from spreads. Then, focus on leveling his elemental skill. If bursting every rotation, level his normal attack and burst equally, otherwise level his normal attack first. Alhatham serves a dual purpose role providing both great on-field damage and applying a large amount of dendro. In order to maximize his damage, many of his teams will use an electro unit to enable spread which contributes to a large portion of his damage output. His best teams diverge into being either Quicken based or Hyper Bloom based. With Quicken teams, pick off field Electro or Dendro units to benefit from Aggravate or Spreads. Good Electro options include Kuki Shinobu and Fischl. Kuki Shinobu can maintain her Grass Ring of Sanctification through most of Alhatham's field time to apply Electro and heal teammates. Fischl can provide great off field damage along with energy. For the third slot, pick Yai Miko, Beto, Lisa, Nahida, Yao Yao, or the Dendro Traveler. The final spot can either be a flexible utility character such as Zhongli or Kazaha, or another Electro or Dendro unit. Hyperbloom teams will need a Hydro unit to create Dendro cores and someone to trigger the cores. The best option for these two roles is Xing Cho because of his easy off field Hydro application, as well as Kuki Shinobu because of her grass ring of sanctification matching Alhatham's field time. Yilan can be used in place of Xingqiu or together with him. Using both Yilan and Xingqiu will limit Quicken uptime, lowering Alhatham's own damage, though this can generally be made up for by Yilan and Xingqiu's combined synergy. In place of Shinobu, Raiden Shogun can also be the Hyper Bloom trigger. Other flex units include Zhongli, Nahida, Kogami, Barbara, and Yao Yao. While the above teams serve as his primary options, his high rate of on-field dendro application also allows him to enable other reactions. Alhatham can allow Toma to trigger consistent high damage Burgians alongside Xing Cho or Ye Lan. Fischl is strongly recommended for the last slot as she maintains quick and uptime for Alhatham's personal damage. Although she is not strictly necessary, not using her comes at a significant sacrifice to Alhatham's own performance. In Bountiful Bloom teams, Alhatham can be used either as an on-field Dendro enabler for off-field units such as Kokomi or Xingqiu to trigger Bloom, or as the Bloom trigger himself. He is unique in being currently one of the few Dendro units to consistently own all Blooms in Bountiful Bloom teams, by staying under two mirrors at all times. This strongly encourages him to build focusing slowly on Elemental Mastery. It is worth noting that since he cannot get spreads in these teams, Due to Nilu's team building restrictions, his personal damage does take a notable hit if he is not a Bloom trigger. Here are some examples of Alhatham as an enabler and as a trigger. Alhatham's constellations might look complicated at first glance, but they are relatively straightforward buffs that change little about how Alhatham is played. So let's break them down. His C1 realistically provides no benefit. Its cooldown reduction is not enough to allow Alhatham to cast his elemental skill twice in a rotation. C2 is a noteworthy elemental mastery buff whenever he generates a mirror, stacking 4 times and granting him up to 200 extra elemental mastery. In terms of raw damage, this is his second best constellation. His C4 buffs his teammate's elemental mastery when he consumes mirrors with his burst, and grants him a dendro damage buff when he generates mirrors with his burst. His C3 and C5 provide levels to his burst and skill respectively, but neither result in a meaningful damage boost as Alhatham's personal DPS relies more on spread rather than raw talent multipliers. C6 is a two-parter. First, it provides him with a sizable crit rate and crit damage buff whenever he generates a mirror, 
while already at the maximum 3 mirror stacks. As a bonus, it causes his burst to always generate 3 mirrors, ignoring the numbers of mirrors consumed. While this improves his burst value as a nuke, it is still usually preferred to start rotations with his burst to maximize his 3 mirror and C6 buff up time. Overall, his constellations provide a smaller damage boost than most other 5 star constellations. However, he is more than complete and competitive as a character at C0. Ul Haytham is a Dendro on field DPS who boasts high personal damage and application in Quicken and Hyperbloom teams. Many see him as a Dendro Kuching or Tartaglia, and they're somewhat correct as Ul Haytham has the benefit of great elemental application along with dynamic field times. Though there are units fighting for his role, including Pignory and Nahida, Ul Haytham brings something unique for each of his niches. While sharing many spread teams with Tignari, Alhatham is able to more effectively enable Hyperbloom. When put against Nahida, Alhatham can contribute more damage than her in Quicken teams but has less flexibility in Bloom related teams. However, do note that Nahida is a great teammate for Alhatham, so picking them both up is a viable strategy and you can always split them up for more team building flexibility when building Dendro teams. I'll hate them becomes a stronger pull the more off-field Electro units are available on your account. Kuki Shinobu in particular provides a great value to almost all of his teams. Yaimiko, Beidou, and Fischl can also shine with I'll hate them due to his dynamic field time allowing them to swap in to cast their necessary skills and bursts. Overall, he is absolutely worth pulling for those who like him or are searching for a strong on-field Dendro unit. That said, he does have multiple units competing for the roles he can fill, which make him far from strictly necessary. Thank you for watching Kutsing Main's theorycrafting staff's thoughts on Al Haytham and what we think you should know before you wish for him. If you think we've missed anything or have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below where we will do our best to answer. Also, be sure to check out our Al Haytham quick guide linked in the description if you are looking for an easy to reference written resource for the details in this video.